All right, welcome back. I'm going to be going through a couple more integration techniques today that are new, um, and then we'll be reviewing for um, a couple more minutes just until we hit the 15 minute mark. Um, so first technique I want to talk about is completing a square. Um, we can use this whenever our powers don't quite match up in the denominator to try and make it so that our powers match up. So for instance, here I've got um, the integral of dx over root 2x minus x squared. Um, if I complete a square here, um, I could factor out a negative 1 first so that I'm in the format to complete a square. So now I've got a quadratic here, x squared minus 2x. Um, to complete a square, I would divide the middle term by 2. So let's divide negative 2 by 2 and then square it. Um, and that would tell me what I needed to add in order to create a perfect square. So if I create a perfect square out of this, I would need to add 1. I don't want to change the original problem, so I'm going to subtract 1 as well. Okay, this x squared minus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square, so that's... If you have ax squared plus bx plus c for your quadratic, in order to create a perfect square, you'll want this c to be b divided by 2 squared. Okay, so we've done that. Um, x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1. Um, this x squared minus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square. That's x minus 1 times x minus 1. Um, so I can substitute in my perfect square. x minus 1 squared. Okay, now if I re-multiply my negative 1 back in, this will become negative x minus 1 squared plus 1. So 1 minus x minus 1 squared. And now, um, if I do a u substitution, where u is my inside part of this, x minus 1, um, and a is a squared equals 1, um, then my du would be equal to dx, which is what I have on top, um, which makes this in the perfect format for an arc sine function, um, where a is 1, u is x minus 1, and du is dx. So if I integrate this, um, I'll get the arc sine of u over a plus c. Since a is 1, that's the arc sine of u plus c. Which gives us, if I resubstitute back in for u, um, the arc sine of x minus 1 plus c. Okay, I'll zoom back out. Um, any questions on what we did for this one? Okay. Um, so usually when we're completing a square and we've got a, um, a part of our problem underneath the square root, we're going to end up with an inverse trig function. Um, another technique we can use is to solve, uh, solve for x in terms of u. Um, normally when we use u substitution, um, we want our du to be one power less than our u. When this isn't possible, um, it could be an inverse trig function. Um, that'll be one less than half the power. Um, if it's not that, though, then we can try rewriting x in terms of u using this technique. So I'm going to make my u substitution like normal. u is my inside function, so that's going to be my 2x minus 5 here. Um, that means my u prime will be 2dx. Now, I've got a problem because I still have this 4x out here that's not the right power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our equation here, u is equal to 2x minus 5, and just solve for u to see if I can resub that way. So if u is equal to 2x minus 5, and that means u plus 5 equals 2x, or x equals u plus 5 divided by 2. So I've just solved for x in terms of u. And now I'm going to take this x and plug that back into my original function. So if u is 2x minus 5, and this is u to the fourth power, and x is u plus 5 over 2, and this x will become u plus 5 over 2. So that gives me u to the fourth power times... Four times u plus five over two times dx. 
Okay, that 4 is 2 times 2 dx, since I have to substitute for u. Uh, u prime is 2 dx. So 2 dx is du, and that leaves me with a um, an extra 2 as a constant. Okay, so if I plug all of that in, that's u to the fourth power, 2x minus 5 to the fourth power, u to the fourth power. I might color code this, actually. That might be easier. Um, u prime is 2dx. Um, so I've got... 2dx for u prime here, um, which will leave me with um, an extra 2 as a constant, since I have to have 4. Okay, then I've also got x here, um, which I'll substitute in here. So x is substituted here, and u prime is substituted here. Okay, so that gives me 2 times u prime, that's the 2 that I had as a constant here in black, times the u prime, which was here in blue, um, times x, which is u plus 5 over 2 here in purple. So blue and purple. Okay, any questions on our substitution? That was a lot of substituting. Mr. Brendan? Yes. Can we use this technique for um, definite integrals? Uh, we can. However, you would need to change your, um, your bounds of your integral to be in terms of u. So what I would use is this formula here, u equals 2x minus 5, and change my bounds. Um, so let's say our bounds were a and b any real numbers you want. Um, then in order to change my bounds, I would take u at b for my upper bound, would be 2 times b minus 5. Um, then u at a for my lower bound would be 2 times a minus 5. So if this had been from 1 to 3, um, this would end up being um, my upper bound, 3, would become 2 times 3 is 6 minus 5 is 1. My lower bound, um, 1, would be 2 times 1 minus 5 is negative 3. So your bounds would change after you rewrite this in terms of u. But other than that, this would do the same as any normal definite integral. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, so we've made all of our substitutions here. For red, purple, and blue. Oops. And now I'm going to simplify this um, so that we can integrate. So if I simplify this, I've got a 2 and a 2 that can cancel. 2 and 2 cancels. Um, so that leaves me with u to the fourth power times u plus 5 times u prime. And if I factor this in, so distribute the u to the fourth power, I'll get u to the fifth power plus 5u to the fourth power times u prime. So I can integrate this one normally with power rule from this point on. To get u to the sixth power over 6, so that's add 1 to the power divided by the new power, plus 5 u to the fifth power over 5, add 1 to the power divided by the new power, plus c. Um, and then we'll simplify. My 5 and 5 can cancel, so I have u to the sixth over 6 plus u to the fifth over f um, 1 plus c. If u is 2x minus 5, so all the way from here, u is 2x minus 5, then I can substitute back in to get my final answer in terms of x u to the 6 is 2x minus 5 to the 6th power over 6, plus u to the 5th is 2x minus 5 to the 5th power. And we've got our final answer. Okay, so any questions on this one?
Okay, um, so I'm gonna run through a couple of review questions, um, kind of mixed derivatives and integrals, and we'll stop after about five minutes or so. Okay, so for these first four, um, I have a couple higher order derivatives. Um, so I don't know if we've seen this notation before, um, but you've probably seen me write this um, throughout the year. This is, if I derive this once, I get dy over dx, right? Um, so let me just call on people really quick. Um, I see Kenichi over in Skype. Um, Kenichi, if I derive this, what will happen? Okay, I don't know if we have Kenichi. Um, let me jump over to Zoom then. So, um, Aileen. Um, if I derive this once, what will happen? Try again because I can't hear you. So, okay. Um, can you try one more time. If I derive this, what will happen? Fifteen x to the fourth power. Okay, keep going. It's twelve x to the third power minus nine x. To the second power. Okay, um, then if I drive this one more time, I'll get my second derivative in terms of x. Um, Kelly, what's going to happen if I drive one more time? Okay, if I have one more time, I'll have my third derivative in terms of x. Um, what do I have left? I've got Jana over in Skype um, and Tommy. So Jana, what's going to happen if I derive one more time? 180x squared plus 72x minus 18. Awesome. Okay, so for this notation, um, d to the n y over dx n. Oops, I didn't write my n's over here, did I? Squared, cubed. Um, n just tells you how many times you derived. Um, so this says I derived y four times in terms of x. Um, this is the same thing as y prime, 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 y to the fourth power, uh, four derivatives. Um, usually, I'll have y, y prime, y prime, prime.